There's more trouble at Fukushima. Nuclear safety experts are accusing the Japanese government of lying after 230 tons of radioactive waste was found in a tunnel underneath the crippled nuclear plant. Just a few days after the Japanese prime minister said, eh, the crisis is over. There's also news that Unit 4 at the plant is on the verge of collapsing, something the nuclear power expert Paul Gunter talked about on my radio show yesterday. Unit 4 is looking more and more like the Leaning Tower of Pisa right now. I mean the whole building itself? The whole building is, is, uh, is listing. And the structure that's holding the pool. Listing. There's listing. There's about 150 tons of high-level nuclear waste. That building is now shifting, and they've been, they've, you know, they've been sending engineers in there to try to um, shore it up to, you know, uh, you know, poles and whatever to keep it from falling over. But if that whole thing falls over, it just, it's just going to dump a whole reactor core right out onto the ground. And this new information suggests that the Japanese government is still misleading the world about just how severe the Fukushima crisis is. But even more troubling is the impact this nuclear crisis on the other side of the world has had right here in the United States. There's shocking new evidence out that the Fukushima disaster may have led to the deaths of as many as 14,000 people in America. For more on this, I'm doc joined by Dr. Jeanette Sherman, internist and toxicologist and co-author of a new report on the link between an increase in deaths here in America and the ongoing Fukushima nuclear crisis. Dr. Sherman, welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Tell us about this study you co-authored that suggests as many as 14,000 Americans have died as the result of Fukushima? Well, uh, my colleague, uh, Joe Mangano, and I used uh, only governmental data, that is by the U.S. government's EPA and CDC, and by comparing um, the deaths before Fukushima for 14 weeks uh, and after Fukushima, and then expanding on the data, we found that there has been an increase in deaths in the United States. Uh, this has been corroborated by findings of deaths, uh, particularly of uh, children younger than one year, in British Columbia. That, which is one of the first places where the radiation would hit. So um, you say younger than one year. Is it that, uh, in fact, I thought that the, the death rate for children that, that age had actually been declining in the United States until the Fukushima uh, it, it reactor. Had. It, had, it had been. And, 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 then, and then the death rate went up. In other words, thousands died. Um, <coughs> why just under one year? And, and what does this have to do with Chernobyl? Well, this is what the same findings we found after Chernobyl. And I'm the editor of the book, and I'll hold it up here, on Chernobyl. Um, catastrophe uh, for people and the environment. And uh, what we found was uh, that, immediate, that children, uh, because their immune systems are not fully formed, and because their detoxification systems are not functioning fully, and because they, you know, you're talking about a child maybe five, six, six seven, eight, ten pounds, and which is uh, they receive a proportionally much higher dose than does an adult who weighs 150 or more pounds. So when, after Fukushima happened, uh, one, of the, one of the more distressing things that we learned from people like Paul Gunter, who came on this program regularly, the folks from Beyond Nuclear, is that our government shut down most of our radiation detectors on the West Coast. So we don't know how much radiation we got. But there were a lot of radioactive isotopes that were in a gaseous form, radioactive iodine and others, or particulate matter that was, that was finely aerosolized, the, the cesium, for example, that got high up enough that it could have gotten here or could have come by the Pacific Ocean. Um, are, you, are you saying explicitly, flat out, that, that it looks like 14,000 children under the age of one in the United States have I'm died? talking 14,000 deaths. Okay, so 14,000 total deaths. But, total. But, but the, so who is the most vulnerable? It's our newborns and young children uh -huh. and the elderly. I see. Uh, many, of the, many of the elderly have, you know, uh, illnesses. Uh, cancer or other illnesses that they are dealing with, diabetes, hypertension, this kind of thing. And this kind of uh, uh, exposure sends many over, just over the, yeah. over the edge. I mean, this is, you know, what's so it's, shocking about this is I think uh, most people think that radiation produces 
cancer after 10 or 20 years. You know, the, you know John Wayne died all those years after the, that, that nuclear uh, above ground test in, in Wyoming or Utah or wherever it was. Um, but you're saying that there's an instantaneous response, relatively well, speaking. Well, I'm not saying an instantaneous, but we saw okay. after Chernobyl um, high rates of thyroid cancer and leukemia. Mm. Uh, and th this occurred within a, a year or two. But this, the, you know, we have to remember that the highest cause of death, except for accidents in children, is cancer. Oh. And so, we're, you know, if you have a three-year-old or a five-year-old or a one-year-old who has cancer, they obviously didn't take 20 years to develop it. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. How much longer might the world, in particular nature and future generations, feel the effects of Fukushima? Well, um, cesium, for, for instance, cesium-137 and strontium-90 uh, have a half-life of approximately 30 years, and it takes 10 half-lives for an isotope to be uh, completely gone. So, you know, 10 times 30 is 300 years or three centuries. Wow. So what can, what can be done? I'm talking about 250,000 years. Wow. So uh, in the minute we have left here, uh, Dr. Sherman, what can be done? Is there anything that can be done? I think people need to be aware of what uh, is being deposited on the United States. Uh, the EPA, in its great wisdom, uh, was conducting uh, air and water and milk sampling on a weekly basis, and then they decided that quarterly was, was plenty enough. I think we need to push for uh, regular testing of food and particularly of milk and dairy products and fish that's coming out of the uh, Pacific Northwest and to have these data freely available to all citizens. Remarkable. Dr. Jeanette Sherman, thanks so much for the great work that you're doing and for, the, for sharing this report with us and for coming on our program tonight. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Sadly, we're just scratching the surface when it comes to how dangerous nuclear power is, yet we keep subsidizing reactors with our tax dollars. This is insanity, and frankly, it needs to end.